White House Communication Director Kate Bedingfield. She was asked by Jake Tapper whether or not the president supports a $10 minimum wage bill following multiple Senate Republicans and Senator Joe Manchin voicing their support for raising that wage to at least $10, but not $15. Here's what she had to say. President Biden supports raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. That is where he stands. That's where he stood for a long time. He believes strongly that that's the level at which people in this country who are working full time uh, uh, can make a, a living wage and not be living in poverty. And, and he believes that that's a, a fundamental matter of values. He doesn't believe that anybody in this country I should work full time and be living and be living in poverty. But, you but what I would say, Jake, is you know, there are currently... But there are currently no active discussions about lowering the threshold. These are details that are going to get worked out. We just, the Senate just passed our, our American Rescue Plan, this massive effort to get aid to people who need it across the country and make these investments. So we're going to, the conversation is going to turn to how we tackle the minimum wage. And but the president is looking forward to working with Congress to determine the best way to do it. But what I can say to you right now is the president is committed to raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Hmm. Democratic strategist Colin O'Hara and our colleague, national political reporter here at The Hill, Jonathan Easley, are back to share their thoughts. Um, Colin, let me start with you on this one. Look, eight Democrats um, defected voting along with the Republicans to vote against raising the minimum wage to $15. Biden signaled defeat on this thing weeks ago. We've been covering it here. Really didn't seem to lift a finger to try to push this thing through. What do you make of it? Yeah, I would say be patient. I could tell that there was not a whole lot of effort to actually include this in the bill in its final form. Because look, I have done these fights and won every single one of them on a statewide basis and a citywide basis all across the country. I have been a part of most of them that have passed. Um, what has to happen in order for people to feel comfortable with these is there has to be the very clear understanding that there's a phased in approach to this. And what people were only hearing was $15, $15 an hour minimum wage change. And that scares a lot of people who are worried about the economy and small but there businesses. Was a, that but there is a phased in approach. I mean, this was this was not going to fully take effect till 2025. So there was a phased in approach. And I mean, you say pa be patient, but look, they don't even have 50 votes for this thing. There's no way they're going to get 60 votes for this thing. This seems right. like the only path forward, given the state of the filibuster, Colin. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not so sure. Here's what I would say. I think they're going to pass the two main things that they need to pass, which was this Recovery Act, and then they're going to go to infrastructure, and I think minimum wage will come up shortly after that. I guarantee that we're going to hear it in the next year, without a doubt. And that gives them time on the front end to be able to build up public pressure and to run a communication campaign to actually put pressure on the eight Democrats and the additional 10 Republicans they might need for this. That's a lot of effort. It takes a lot of time, and to be able to do it in the first 100 days is very difficult. What do you think, Jonathan? Because, I mean, this is this is very interesting. Where Biden, I mean, say the president, the White House, they say they support $15 minimum wage. They didn't actually fight very hard for it within the Senate in terms of its inclusion. Even when Joe Manchin and them were like, hey, we support an $11, they didn't even compromise on that. Look, Senate floor time is the most precious thing in Washington. I'm going to hold my breath to say that the infrastructure plan isn't going to take at least a couple of months to negotiate. After that, everybody's already running for reelection. So what do you think in terms of their actual commitment to this issue, Jonathan? Well, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's one thing to, to say that you've always mm -hmm. supported something. It's something else entirely to to fight for it. And I don't think that we saw Biden uh, leaning on these Democratic senators to get behind $15 an hour. I mean, there's, I think, pretty broad support to raise the minimum wage to at least 10, maybe maybe $11. But if $15 was a priority uh, for the White House, we, we would know. We would hear about right. it. We'd hear about them leaning on, the, on these senators. I mean, there was... You know, like Crystal said, there's there's not even 50 votes for the $15 an hour minimum wage right now. And there was a surprising number of Democratic defections. So it could just be the White House sort of reading the tea leaves, seeing where the caucus is, knowing that it's expending a lot of political capital just to get the COVID relief bill across the finish line and not wanting to spend any more, hoping to, to keep some for, for infrastructure or something else down the road. But uh, yeah, we, we hear the, the White House saying right. the right things about wanting to raise it to $15 an hour, but they're not necessarily putting any real muscle behind it. Mm -hmm. And Colin, something we've played here a couple of times is in that video where Bernie Sanders dropped out and he conceded like the one issue that he was like, Joe, do you support $15 minimum wage? That was like the one issue that was really upfront promised to progressives, but more importantly, promised to working people here. Are they worried because this COVID relief bill has some really good, really important things and it's very generous, especially to families with children. It's going to be super helpful this year. Are they worried about the fact that this 
big promise on the $15 minimum wage that ultimately they didn't fight on it and ultimately they didn't get that significant piece here, through, are they concerned that that will ruin some of the messaging around the larger package? Well, I think they should be. Uh, and I think they've really got to go out and sell the package. And then that's why I am confident that they need to bring up this issue because you made a really good point that, you know, uh, Sagar, you said that people are going to be going mm -hmm. into reelections here pretty soon. Let's say after the summer, people are going to be starting to focus on reelection, certainly as we get into January. They're going to have to move this thing relatively quickly and be able to claim it as a victory going into 2022 to support Democrats not getting you know, crushed. Now, look, if we look at the numbers out there, it's a strategic win for them. No matter where you are, there's about a 60 to 65 percent approval rating across the board for this thing with zero communication around it. Once there's positive communication around this, I, I imagine you can get that up to 75 percent, which puts some real public pressure on the senators who defected on 15 initially or, you know, put some some additional pressure on Republicans who haven't done it there. And I think not backing off the $15 an hour minimum wage right now gives them the opportunity to set that as their main negotiating point. And if they have to move back, maybe they move back to a 13 or a 12 as opposed to 15 to get it done and not just settle at 11. Yeah, I mean, so, Jonathan, this is the question, which is how they're going to run in 2022. Already you're seeing Biden and them, the White House, saying they are going to not make the Obama mistake that they think of taking credit for the, uh, for the stimulus package. The question is, is in marginal races down in Georgia, right? Like, could they possibly be attacked for not delivering fully on a check or for income requirements saying, you know, necessarily, oh, he didn't deliver on the $15 minimum wage, other things that they made promises for in terms of the Senate? Could that be a political liability for them in 2022 if they don't get it done? That's for you, Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they... They, they did make a lot of promises about what was going to go in this bill. And as, as, as it always to happen, some of those promises mm -hmm. had to be pared back a little bit because of the reality of legislating. I mean, potentially there's going to be Democrats and some liberals who are disappointed that maybe the, the bill didn't go far enough. But also right now, I think we're seeing the, in the polls, at least right now, the, the bill is broadly popular. It's extremely mm -hmm. popular, uh, even even among among centrists, among some Republicans even. So it, it, the bill does not seem to be a, a huge liability for Democrats right now. And I think they could even get a potentially a boost uh, after this once once these checks do hit people's accounts and uh, and, and some of the, uh, the the other measures that help to lift people out of, out of poverty that Crystal was talking about. I mean, it's a it's a it's a massive spending bill that's hugely popular. So uh, that the politics are a bit unclear. It's possible that it, that it could dampen some some liberal enthusiasm, but I think yeah. right now it's, it's definitely a net benefit. Yeah, yeah. It's be interesting. I think the central issue of the midterm elections is going to be uh, Dr. Seuss. That's what I <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you. Great to see you Thanks, both. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Yeah. Next on Rising, Zed Jelani is going to join us to discuss changing ideology, especially amongst Hispanic voters. Doesn't Rising continues.